Hey YouTube, uh, so this is my second video for today, even though I've not done one for ages. It's actually my second attempt at this video. Um, I had, it took me a while to get the, the drum pedal to do what I wanted to, and the whole time I was showing you my builder's bum. So I decided that, I, you know, the occasional flash is alright, but it was like a whole 30 seconds of milk butt. So I'm doing it again. Um, tonight I'm going to sit and watch Are You All Staying At Home, Stay Home, Stay Metal, which is... Baby Metal, my favourite, I'm even wearing the t-shirt. Um, they've, they're streaming for the coronavirus thing, the stay home thing. They're putting on the Tokyo Dome concerts, the Red Night today, and then tomorrow they're putting on the Black Night. So if you're at all interested, you should watch, even if you're, if you're watching with the sound down, but just watch the, you want to see this thing, I think it's like 100,000 people each night, and it's sold out, and they've got the biggest stage and the most amazing looking concert you've ever seen and I guarantee you'll never have seen anything like it. Nuts. So I'm going to sit and have a, a wee bottle of Bucky, I think, seeing as it's Saturday night, or is it Friday night? Doesn't, I can't I'm lost with this lockdown thing. It's a, it's a drinking night anyway, <clears throat> so I'm going to sit and watch that. Uh, today I, well I did a video for my resonator earlier on, but today I did some mods. Yes, I did some modded an original 1983 Washburn. Um, I got this off my now pal James, who lives two miles down the road. Because at the time, before I met him, I thought that I had probably had one of the biggest Washburn collections in Britain, and then I thought that, or maybe you know Scotland or Glasgow. And it turns out it's like this: the, the guy I got this off, I think, has more than me, and he only lives about two miles away. I was like, yeah. So I don't have the biggest Washburn collection. I don't know how many I've got. Maybe, maybe. 20, 15, 20, something like that. Maybe not as many as that. Don't know. Anyway, so I was after a, an A5 for ages. This is the sort of Telecaster version of the stage series. Um, and I know you're saying, why is it Telecaster? Well, okay, it does have a, it's got a Telecaster plate on it. I didn't put that on, it's standard. Uh, but these normally have two single coil pickups. But because this is a, a 1983, like an early one, when they started out, they had two humbuckers. Um, so what I did was I broke into the pickups and put push-pull pots. So I've got a neck coil split and a bridge coil split. And I made it so that um, here the the bridgest of the bridge pickup and the neckest of the neck pickup, so it's the outside two, so they're hum cancelling the middle position. Um, yeah, so A5. The stage C's are, are not, not that long ago I did a video of my first washburn which was a which is a b28 which is this shape there's the a series and the b series b for base i would imagine um b the 20 is the top of the range one if you saw the if you look that up you'll see it. it's got like a, a maple top a tiger maple top and it's through neck well it's an eight string bass but there's a guitar version of it fancy brass everywhere and bindings and all these things this is the baby of the range the cheapest one um it's bolt on neck um and it doesn't have any binding on it it's also, it's also got the only one that's got a maple neck it's still the the v-neck profile though it's like toblerone it's amazing i absolutely love love that um uh, what else is there interesting about this um you should notice that the the tuners are dead close together so you can't use your string winder and your fingers hit off them it's like they're really it's, although the headstock i, I love the shape of it only because it matches this bit. It's, it's a proper hockey stick, I think they call that, or I call that. So it kind of looks like a, a hockey stick. Um, actually, looking at it there, I wonder if it's designed so that it sits sits level. So it's, it's almost almost exactly in line with my amp. With the, you know, the, if you look at the silver line, the gold line that's on my Marshall there. Almost perfect. Um, yeah, so what was wrong with this guitar was not an awful lot, it just needed cleaned. Um, I did a video of it when I got it like six months ago or something like that. I always figured I would eventually put coil splits in it because it's meant to be the Telecaster one and it didn't have coil splits. Uh, also, the it had a temperamental pickup switch, which was really annoying. Sometimes when you switch to the bridge pickup, it just didn't. It just The guitar just went dead, so I just put a brand new switch in it. The pots and the switch weren't original anyway, um, so I figured if, I might as well change the pots and put the push-pulls in. Um, yeah, so 
on this one we've got the power sustain pickups same as the expensive ones it's got the same harmonic lock bridge so it's got brass saddles and it's got clamps on either side which clamp it down it's too strong like a telecaster is um yeah the other thing that spurred me on to doing this apart from the fact it's been hanging on my wall and i keep i've been meaning to change that switch forever uh, i bought some pickups on ebay just before this virus thing hit just no name humbucker pickups they were listed as and i looked at it and i thought that's very like a washburn power sustain and now that I've had, so I wanted to take this out and have a look at it, and it's exactly the same. So it is. I did. I bought, bought a pair of Washburn Power Sustain pickups, which are totally impossible to find because there's no branding on them whatsoever. Well, this one, someone's written on the, is it 11.4k 11, 11 on it in black pen, but it's a, it's, a, it's an identical pickup to what's in these. Um, so I, I figure that as a total win. Um, I was not. I don't know. There's no way of getting these pickups at all unless you, this whoever it is took them out of the guitar that they came out of the guy in the advert did say he thinks they were from a washburn um and i think he was right uh, my pal michael has um met the guy who made these or designed them the guy who ran the factory when they were getting made and he said this this was new information like last like the end of tail end of last year the pick the power sustained pickups are Ibanez Super 70s because that was he went to the factory I think it might be Maxon that made the factory and just said well we'll just have those ones just chose them from the spec list so they are Ibanez Super 70s but they're not branded um, made by the same people and all that yeah so so that's a bridge pickup so it's, a, it's the most the bridgest of the coils pull but I thought might as well make it separate which means I can have humbucker and single coil or humbucker and single coil or sorry single coil and humbucker
put our stack in the box distortion. I'm just using my wee Laney DC15 here, and I'm playing through the three by twelve cabinet because I've got a three by twelve cabinet. Humbucker in the neck and single coil in the bridge. I 
single coil bus pedal wrench. Rap pedal.
Yes, I'm really enjoying this guitar having the the single coils. It's smashing. I'm so pleased I did it. Um, I could have gone back. It's, it's all reversible anyway, but definitely this guitar thing. I mean, the only thing that really makes it a Telecaster is the fact it's got the Telecaster neck plate on it. And I suppose the through string, but I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, I suppose you the argument still is, is it still a, is it a Gibson Explorer? It sort of is. I don't actually know what the scale length is. Where's my measuring tape that's normally lying on the floor? Gone. I'll be in one. It'll be, it'll be the, the original video for it. Yeah. So this is a smashing guitar, even though it's the, the baby of the range, the cheap one. Um, what you get with a lot of these Japanese guitars of this era, early eighties. This is slap bang. Nineteen eighty three is just perfect. Eighty two, eighty three. I'm generally sort of, sort of seventy nine to about eighty six or eighty seven is my perfect bands, but eighty two and eighty three seem to be just a bit perfect um but the thing with th this level of guitar in this era the cheaper ones are cheaper the way the original gibson S uh, les paul jr was cheaper it's cheaper because it doesn't have the fancy bits on it they still make it to the same quality though so it's still the same quality as the a20 and the a10 and stuff it just doesn't have the binding and obviously it's cheaper to put a bolt on neck on it um but it's still a top-notch guitar um, it's the same with a lot of these ones West Tone in particular like that I mean that's quite a, that's quite a basic well it's only one pickup in it so I don't think that's an expensive guitar um, the Rager there that's really good that that is an expensive one that's the Prestige from West Tone uh, so that's 82 I think that's 84 so um, in that era and all the Japanese factories were all fighting with each other trying to make the best guitar and it was not that they were trying to make the one with the most features they were just trying to make the best instruments and it really shows i mean this is this is an amazing guitar so i might just put this up tomorrow uh, rather than tonight oh no i've already said i'm going to watch baby metal tonight and i've got a buck faster caster that i should probably have running by tomorrow it's sitting there i've already put a fingerprint in the paint by being too impatient waiting for it it's on the back though so you can't see it it's behind the but I've, I've learned and from experience that basically when you want to test whether the paint's dry or not you poke it behind where the neck plate is <laughs> so that there's a it's got my fingerprint behind the neck plate but um you don't put it you don't poke it here because then you just end up with a big fingerprint you can see once you, once it has eventually dried So I'm looking forward to my baby metal concert tonight. I have seen it before in sort of dodgy piratey type thing with hundreds of pop-ups and gaps in it. But this is actually you know, just straight off the DVD. I would have bought the DVD if it wasn't for the price of the bloody things. Baby Metal did two DVDs like after the Metal Resistance tour run. Was that 2000 and... Was it was long ago? Was it 2014? Something like that. And they did one at Budokan and one at um, Wembley Arena. And they were both normal dvds so like i don't know 10 or 15 quid or whatever it is for a dvd so i bought them it's like that that's totally no problem then then i heard about this tokyo dome thing it's like oh, i'll have that 100 quid <laughs> or probably more than that now because it'll be starting getting rare but they keep releasing special edition dvds at their concerts and they're all it's flipping expensive the only ones you can actually i can i can justify buying are the two that were like a tenner each the budokan and the Wembley one, um, but that's it's, it's a absolutely fun. What a, what a concert! So it's 
it's also got my favourite song on it live, which I don't think I've, I've never heard them play it live, but I've seen them. But um, it's a song called Tales of Destinies, which is kind of like um, it's like I don't know, like Dream Theater or Rush or something, but twice the speed and twice as hard. It's totally ridiculous. It's the silliest music I've ever heard. It's the one that really blew me on, got me onto baby metal, just because it was just like so utterly bonkers. It's like it's absolute rapid fire dream theater and then it's got like um what do you call it is it the charleston piano but you doing like in it and then it's back into just extreme extreme turbo metal <laughs> it's just like all in one song and then it ends and fades out into the one which is the most ridiculous guitar solo ever it's just it's just nuts can't can't say enough about it so watch that tonight if you're if you've never heard of it and uh, or if you can't make that watch it tomorrow and welcome down the rabbit hole. And you end up buying t-shirts or whatever. This is this concert was actually like it's a hundred thousand people or whatever it is was like a, the month before I saw them and bought this t-shirt in Glasgow. Um, so in that ego, it's like hundred thousand people, and the closest ones about three hundred meters away because the stage is absolutely stupid. It's circular, and so the band are in the middle, and they sort of spin, and then the stage on the outside spins as well like in the middle of the, of the Tokyo Dome, and then it's got like a big pillar at the middle with a, a, a round screen thing. And then there's like these big runways that run out. Nuts. And I saw them from like three feet away where I was literally too close to the band to be able to watch the three girls dance. It was like, which one do I choose? Because they were literally where the camera is, within spitting distance. Rock and roll!